If I was in college and I wanted to land my first big tech software engineering internship for the summer of 2025, here is everything that I would start on right now. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sajad. I'm a computer science master's graduate from Georgia Tech. I landed my first big tech software engineering job at the age of 20, earning $220,000 every single year. I've worked at big tech companies such as Amazon, and now every single day I help hundreds of thousands of students land their role in big tech. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you a comprehensive eight week guide to land your first internship. And I'm so glad you're watching this video right now because companies just open up their slots for next summer. And once those slots are filled, they will not open them again. So let's get started right away. So in your eight week guide, first we have week one and two, and you're going to work on projects. At this point, you're not really a pro, nor do you have any experiences under your belt, but projects are your experiences before you get formal work experience. But then begs the question, hey, what projects do you actually do? Well, if you're a complete beginner that doesn't know how to code, start simple, maybe like a calculator in Java or to-do list in Python, those simple projects. But once you get a little more advanced, try these two projects. One, a full stack web application. Take a Pomodoro, for example. It's a timer that helps with project management. For this, you're gonna need a clean front end that can display timers, sessions, and projects to the user. But in the back end, you're gonna need to create an elaborate structure that can store timers within sessions and sessions within projects. I recommend using React.js for the front end and Python or Java for the back end. Two, you have a machine learning project. Pick a data set on Kaggle.com. For example, I did a project one time predicting COVID-19 deaths. So you take this data, clean it, process it using pandas or numpy, which are Python libraries, then learn the sklearn library and use the fit and predict functions to train and test your models. Bonus points if you can create visualizations using matplotlib and get performance metrics. So after these two weeks, you have experiences and skills under your belt. Now it's time for week three, your resume. The biggest mistake that I see a lot of people make on their resumes is terrible, terrible formatting. I mean, y'all check yourselves out in the mirror 50 times before you step a foot out the door, but you can't have a half decent resume. I don't get how this works. But lucky for you, I have a free resume template link in description so you can get amazing, amazing formatting. Now in terms of what to actually put onto your resume, here are some quick fire five tips. One. Remove the start date of your education and only put the expected graduation date. Companies hate hiring freshmen and sophomores, so by taking off the start date, you remove them from the idea of that in their minds. And trust me, that's what landed me my first big tech software engineering internship at Amazon as a freshman in college. Two, include your citizenship status. If you are a citizen, of course, it'll fast track recruitment for you because recruiters ideally want to hire citizens. It's just cheaper how the companies work. Their psychology, not mine. Three, no high school experience on your resume whatsoever, unless it is super, super technical. For example, once I got to college, I removed debate club, model U1, DECA from my resume, but I kept a machine learning project I did in high school. Four, experiences and projects are way, way, way more valuable than volunteering and extracurriculars. These companies do not care how altruistic you are. Even if you read books to kids at a library for four years, do not put that on your resume because they only care about what technical value you bring to the company. Five, include numbers. They drive eyeballs to your resume. So after you have a perfect resume, do not apply for a job yet. Week four is probably the most crucial and that is networking. Oh, but I have no idea how to network. None of my friends work in big tech. Well, do you have a LinkedIn? Yes, you do. Okay, perfect. When I was applying for internships back in the day, I used to go onto LinkedIn, search up software engineering at company X. Now, a problem a lot of people do is like just connect with people and think that's networking, but that's not really what it is. I personally would connect with 30 to 50 people from said company, like software engineer at Google. I would connect with them and then I would actually shoot them a message. I would say, Hey, my name is Sajad. I'm a computer science major here at Georgia Tech. I have this experience and I have this interest. Would you be down to hop on a 15 minute call to talk about your experiences at this company? Through this, you turn a cold outreach to a warm outreach. And then once you hop on a call, you establish rapport and be like, hey, would you be down to give me a referral to this company for this upcoming internship program? Do not, do not, do not apply without a referral. Trust me, you will be shooting yourself in the foot, especially in this market. You need every single advantage you can get. Once you get the referrals, now we can head into week five and you can start applying. Here are a few resources you can use and not sponsored by the way. One, notify.careers. Every single day, they send you open job postings that are tailored to your location and desired salary. Two, 
levels.fyi slash internships. You can see exact compensation packages and bonuses and apply to open positions. Now you can actually flex on your friends if you make more money. Three, LinkedIn itself. It's a great resource because you can straight up apply to so many jobs with your LinkedIn profile within the matter of seconds. Four, Google and search upon Google GitHub Summer 2025 Internship. You'll see many repositories that have open positions just listed out there and they typically update them pretty well throughout the school year. Once you apply to referrals to companies, you typically will be hearing back with an initial behavioral screening. So for week six, we got behavioral interview prep. And for this thing, I got three things to say. One, have a good personality, learn from me. Two, know everything on your resume. Typically when you come into an interview, they will ask you different questions like, tell me about a time when you dealt with the conflict. Tell me about a time in which you had to meet a tight deadline. The ideal situation would be you answer these questions from experiences that are on your resume. So for each experience, you should have a surrounding story on your resume. Don't just say, hey, I worked at Google. Say, while I was at Google working on the new API call for the Maps team, we dealt with a conflict in implementations and we deliberated upon design choices and we went with the most cost efficient option. Deriving your answers to the questions from your resume gives you that complete holistic look. Three, know your leadership principles. I stole this from Amazon. Every single employee hired into Amazon must adhere to 14 different leadership principles. It's their company values. But something that I realized that is so cool about them is that they make for great responses to behavioral interview questions. For example, What's your biggest strength? Well, my biggest strength is I am very customer obsessed and oriented. Any project I'm implementing and solving, I put the customer's interests and mindset first. And this is apparent through design choices, usability, and product delivery. What is your biggest weakness? Well, my biggest weakness is that sometimes I dive too deep into certain problems. I get lost in my work from time to time and I fail to see the bigger picture. You see how these are just so much nicer sounding than just the generic ones? And if you want a behavioral interview question being that has target skills for what they're looking for, check out link in description absolutely for free once again. Once you pass the initial behavioral HR screens, now it is time for a technical interview prep in week seven. Technical interviews usually come in three forms. One, OAs, online assessment. Two, online video interviews, three whiteboard interviews. Overall, what all these interviews target is data structures and algorithms and leaked code. Let me know if you guys like a full length video on this and I'll probably make one. But in short, it's important to learn every single data structure and algorithm first. And for that, I recommend csvistool.com. And then after learning that, that's when you actually put it into practice. And for that, I recommend obviously going on to leaked code, starting off with easy questions. The important thing is to practice based on different structures types, not just like the difficulty, meaning do a bunch of different array questions until you master it, then a bunch of different stacks, a bunch of different queues. And then as you're mastering each data structure and algorithm, you move on to the next one. So you have your fundamentals extremely tight. Oh, but what happens if you get stuck when you're doing a practice problem? Well, that's where I have your next source and that is Geeks for Geeks. This is a site that for leak code questions, they provide solutions that are brute force, optimized and optimal and many different coding languages. So it's perfect regardless of your background. They also have other articles and visual diagrams so you can learn more technical stuff. Okay, so at this point you have successfully passed your technical interviews landed that offer and for the final week, week number eight, let's talk about offer negotiations and post offer activities. Rule number one, for your internships, do not ever negotiate your salary unless you have a competing offer and it's something significant. It's really hard, especially in this market, to come by offers. And if you try to negotiate, there's always a chance where they pull the plug on you. And trust me, an extra $5 an hour will probably not change your life. But if companies pull your offer away, that'll probably significantly hurt your life. But in terms of other things that you should do once you actually get your offer, well, first of all, chill, relax and celebrate because you worked really hard. But then one or two months before your internship start date, reach out to your recruiter and ask if you can be put in touch with your manager. Try to set up a one-on-one -on -one with your manager. This way you can at least start mentally preparing for your work this summer. Or maybe if you're gonna work on a technology that you have no clue about, you can actually start maybe doing a Coursera course on it. It just gets you so prepared. So reach out one or two months 
in advance. Well, that's about all I have for this video. I really hope that you guys liked it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want a complete in-depth guide of what software engineers actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, you might like this video right here.